The Lord be with you. Greetings and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Roser, and for this fourth Sunday after Pentecost, we follow the order of Matins. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, O oh, come, let us worship him. Our psalm this day is a portion of Psalm 119, beginning at verse 153, marked with the Hebrew letter Resh. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your just decrees. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust, because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your just and righteous decrees endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn this day is hymn 685, Let Us have Ever Walk with Jesus. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure, through a world that would deceive us, and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims hear our home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do the Father's bidding, faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus, and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness, where he is there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus. 
Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate to heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you on high. Let us also live with Jesus, he has risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken. Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members. Where you live, there we shall be, in your presence constantly, living there with you forever. Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 28. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing, and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this day is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to one another, to, to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now that we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive, and I died. The very command, commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. 
Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again from Paul's letter to the Romans in the seventh chapter. What then shall we say, that the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet, if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it, killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. When's the last time you played Monopoly? It's been a long time for me, but there is one thing I still remember to do. I watch very carefully for that get out of jail free card. As a kid, I remember tucking the edge of that card under my side of the game board where everyone could see it and remember that I had that wonderful bit of immunity, that guarantee of escape. Of course, the card is worthless unless you're hit with the law. Go to jail, go directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200. The strange thing about Monopoly is that you don't go to jail because you broke a rule of the game or because you did something wrong. Going to jail is just a random event. Roll the dice, land on a certain square, draw a certain card, and you're on your way to jail. So you can honestly say, so it was an accident, it wasn't my fault, it's not fair. But then, of course, Monopoly is only a game. That's not the way it is in real life. In real life, yes, once in a while, people are randomly and wrongly sent to jail. Most, however, feel the law's crushing weight because they've done something wrong. They might get mad at the police or the prosecutors or the judge, but the truth is that it, it, isn't, it isn't the rules or the system that put them in jail. They're in jail because they did something wrong. The law doesn't get them. Sin does. 
The law just shows sin to be sin. I hope that'll help you understand, better understand today's text, because you see, at this point in his letter to the Romans, Paul has a concern, and that concern is to defend the righteousness and holiness of the law of God. To borrow the title of an old hymn, Paul here points out that the law of God is good and wise. Too many people, too many Christians, boil down their faith to an oversimplified gospel that says, Jesus loves me, this I know, and this is all I need to know. They ignore the law of God as something unimportant, or worse, they see the law as something bad. For them, the law is negative, depressing, not something to bother with because, well, God is love. Other Christians, in response, seem to dwell on nothing but the law. To them, Christianity is a set of rules for good behavior. Obey those rules. That's what makes God happy with us. And if God's laws aren't clear enough, we may throw in a few additions of our own. But the Christian faith is not a matter of the law versus the gospel. Swinging to either of those extremes loses sight of what God does in and through the law. To quote that hymn I mentioned a moment ago, the law of God is good and wise and sets his will before our eyes, shows us the way of righteousness, and dooms to death when we transgress. Its light of holiness imparts the knowledge of our sinful hearts that we may see our lost estate and turn from sin before too late. So look at what Paul says here. He starts by pointing out that we are bound to the law as long as we live. The illustration he uses is marriage. The only thing that truly releases a married woman from her husband is his death. If she lives with another man while her husband is alive, Paul says she will be called an adulteress. Maybe that's not such a big deal in today's world, as adultery is a normal way of life for so many. But in God's eyes, this is huge. It's sin, and the wages of sin is death. But back to Paul's point. The law of God is binding on a person as long as he lives. You are married to your sinful self, your old Adam, and the law is going to hang around your neck and point to that sin, constantly accusing you, which is what the law does, until that old Adam dies. So what are you going to do about it? Nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. To kill yourself would be a sin. To leave things as they are leaves you under the law's constant accusation that you are a sinner. You're trapped. All this might make the law seem like a bad thing. But Paul points out that it's not the law that's bad. It's you. If it had not been for the law, you would not have known sin. Apart from the law, Paul says, sin lies dead. But when the commandment came, sin came alive and you died. Mind you, it wasn't the law that did this to you. It was your sin. Do you really want your sin shown to be sin? Now we probably say no. The normal response of a sinful human being is to show no weakness, to admit to no fault, to blame everything on somebody else. Yet, through the law, sin is shown to be sin, and this is what happens and needs to happen to sinful human beings. For then, and only then, do you see that there is a way out. One way out. The price of release according to the law, is death. That's why Jesus came. God the Father sent his only Son into this world to save it. Jesus came and stepped into this life and into this world where he became your sin and died your death for you. He died in your place so that you may belong to another so that you can be freed from your marriage to your old Adam and now be married to him who has raised you from the dead. That's not something that happened somewhere out in the great beyond. It happened for you here at the font of holy baptism. 
As Paul wrote in the previous chapter of Romans, chapter 6, beginning at verse 3, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. The law showed you who and what you were before God, driving you to the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, through that gift of Jesus Christ, you are released from the law. You're no longer under the terror of condemnation and the sentence of death for your sin. Jesus died your death for you. You are forgiven. You are free. Mind you, you're not free to do your own thing. You've been set free from marriage to your old Adam, your old sinful self, and you've been joined in marriage to Jesus Christ. Instead of being a slave to sin, which leads to death, you're now a slave to God, serving him not in the old way of the written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. And what does that new life look like? What are we to do? Once again, that good and wise law of God comes into play. As that old hymn says, To those who help in Christ have found and would in works of love abound, the law shows what deeds are his delight and should be done as good and right. So, forgiven our sin, living a new life in Christ, we come back to the law as a guide for our life with God. The law of God is indeed good and wise. It doesn't save us, but it shows us we need to be saved. And once we've been brought into that one saving faith in Jesus Christ, the law shows us how our loving God would have us live. May God so guide us in his law and with his law as we live in his grace through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The father of an infinite majesty, your adorable, true, and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father, we believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you, and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O oh Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. 
O Lord, let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, grant health, wisdom, and integrity to all in authority over us, especially to the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, the Congress, all legislative bodies, and all judges and magistrates. Endow them with your spirit and with respect for your word, that they would serve your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the punishment of wickedness, so that we all may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. According to your gracious will, turn the hearts of our enemies and make them to walk with us in humility and peace. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, grant to those in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, the healthful spirit of your grace for healing, strength, comfort, and relief. Bless especially those who suffer for the sake of your name and your word. Give them courage to stand firm in their afflictions and patience until the day of your deliverance. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, preserve us from pestilence and every evil. Give to us favorable weather and cause the fruits of the earth to prosper that we may enjoy them in due season and offer you praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness to us. Lend your blessing to all honorable vocations and honest industry that we may serve where our skills and abilities may be of good use. Bless the arts and music that we may please you and be encouraged by all that is good, right, true, and beautiful. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Go in peace.